Hi, this is Carl James Lackford on channel 012975. This is my video log on Thursday the 22nd of January. And basically it's, it's mainly looking at uh, my series of lectures this week towards my classes for Archaeology Camera, looking at the Arch of Ketesaphon, one of the great wonders of the world. But before we actually get on to that in the videos, which we'll end with, it's been a very busy day today because I've, I've actually do, had to do three lectures today. Uh, absolutely exhausted me, so the need for the weekend will be very fitting. So, um, be teaching an Antwerp major and project, and I had to do an outreach lecture in the evening um, with my book, The Romans in the Vedic Morgan, which was very well received. Um, all my students obviously loved the presentation with my classes, um, not leaving me to do much else. So this is the teaching material for the week starting the, the 19th current of January 2000 on the Arch of Ketesaphon. Any comments? I've got a, a selection the images? of images that I've Thank used in my PowerPoint projections for the Skype class, my Lantern Major, Bridge End and Barry classes respectively. And we were looking at the ancient wonders of the world, um, really more or less according to the Greek, the Roman and other mindsets um, in the Mediterranean. But obviously the earlier mindset going back to the days of the first lists created by Herodotus. See last week's notes. This week's ancient wonder is not on the seven ancient wonders list prepared by um, Philo of Byzantium in the 220s. But this site itself is to look at the Arch of Ketsesiphon. The first image to give you a bit of padding to give you an idea what these lists would have looked like. This is the uh, one of the many publications and pages that was found from the Okorankas excavation in Egypt that revealed a large quantity of documents from the ancient uh, Greek world all the way through to the fairly more recent Arabic texts. This is a page from a copy of book number eight um, of Herodotus' work. This is a copy um, written down in the 100s AD. Remember, Herodotus was writing in the 430s. The image coming on is the ancient wonder that we're looking at today, the city site of, that consists only today of the Arch of Ketesaphon. The Arch of Ketesaphon uh, at our site that we're looking at, 22 miles south of Baghdad and approximately 20 odd miles north of Babylon. Ketesaphon uh, back in the 500s AD was one of the largest, it's believed the largest city in the world at that time, a population in excess of 1 million people. The remains standing at the site today, just the remains of the arch and part of the building of this great palace-like structure at Ketesaphon. The builder of this site is debated, but it's believed to have been a marvel of the ancient world in at least the 500s. This is a photograph of the arch in 1864, and you can see three people standing on one of two arches standing at Ketesaphon in 1864. But alas, uh, between 1864 and the First World War, half of the structure completely disappeared. And why? This is another image, uh, probably from just before 1888. And what happened in 1888 was an event that rendered the site, a third of the site, completely disappeared, including one of the two arches remaining for the Arch of Ketesaphon. This site is completely comprised of mud brick, a great wonder of the world. This image is from the 1920s. These are the soldiers that were fighting against the Ottomans. These are British um, Commonwealth soldiers, uh, British and Indian troops, fighting on the plains by Ketesaphon. They did not damage the arch of Ketesaphon, but the British army were completely defeated um, as they tried to capture Baghdad by Ottoman forces led by German command. British army was completely encircled and destroyed and the remaining troops marched into captivity. Great major defeat in November 1915 for the Allies. 
this is this is another ruins of um, a site which would have been very much related to the build and structure at Ketsesifon. Um Very similar, but this does not have the wonderful facing that we see at Ketsesifon. Many of these type palaces are to be found um, in the region south of Baghdad and elsewhere in modern day Iraq. This is the rear of Ketsesifon. Number of images looking at the arch of Ketsesifon to give you a gravity of the site. This is as it probably looked in the 1920s when um, this is from the rear but you see the frontal part of the arch which if you looked at the front facade is at missing at this point so obviously this has been destroyed by the 1888 flood. Yeah, this, this reconstruction is, is very inaccurate. Um, the, the image on the left, this is how the Arch of Cassesimon stands today with a reconstruction of the right facade with a the flying buttress on the left supporting the remaining original facade of the um, frontage of the Arch of Cassesimon. The reconstruction itself may give you an impression of how this palace could have looked. Um, it's palace or then again it would have had much space to be a palace because this arch itself took up a huge amount of space but it would have been a great marvel at Ketsesifon. Why I can't find any references to any ruins at Ketsesifon, um seeing that it was a city of one million people left standing at the site other than the arch I do not have an answer to that but the site has been extensively excavated by German and Italian archaeologists. Stamp showing the arch of Ketsesifon. Uh, issued by the British Mandate in the 1920s, all the way running up to the Second World War. This shows um, the point itself, the Arch of Ketsesifon, is a site that was warred over between the Great Empire of Rome and the Parthians, eventually the, per, um, the Persians, um, between at least uh, 116 with Emperor Trajan and uh, going all the way into the reign of Septimus Severus all the way up to fairly more um, times into the 300s. But it was warred over between Rome. It was one of those prizes between East and West. Nothing has changed. Obviously, we wouldn't have had the religion of Muhammad and uh, Christianity at that time. So nothing seems to have changed the warring in East and the West. Nothing's changed in our history. We have not learned from our lessons. The city itself was captured by Septimus Severus. Um, and it celebrated the victory on the 28th of January 198 when Septimus Severus is believed to have captured Ketsetsavon uh, before it became one of the great wonders of the world as, as a site, as a city itself. And he's believed Septimus Severus to have taken away uh, hundreds of thousands of people into captivity, hence causing more anger and dissension in the region. This is carved on one of his triumphal arches. This is the reconstruction, most of the reconstruction by Italian archaeologists in the 1970s, thanks a lot to a work by earlier German archaeologists. You can see the right facade being reconstructed and under the patronage of uh, the great Saddam Hussein, uh, ruler of Iraq up until 2003, his work funded extensively um, rebuilds at the Arch of Ketsasafon as well. Thanks to him, we can also see that the site is to be in a preserved state today. You can see an American soldier as they had captured the site by, uh, well, mid part of 2003 as they, as they had rolled up to the south of Baghdad. It's one of those sites the Americans did not damage um, and the many interesting thing that you can say about the site that the reconstruction is so good that it matches the original perfectly. Downside is that the future archaeologists will not be able to see what is the original or what isn't. There are people climbing on the arch of Ketsesimon today. You can see the mud brick detail. Obviously jumping up and down on the arch, you never know, could bring it down, which would be a great tragedy for something which is in excess of 1,500 years old and older. You can see the holes under the bottom here. My translation of these is to actually relieve the pressure of the arch. Holes are sometimes placed into arches as I've seen in my own studies with industrial archaeology from about the 1750s as we're trying to create arch building in this country. So the holes themselves would relieve pressure. I would assume these little holes themselves, circular holes, would relieve pressure on the arch as it spans. This is uh, something, um, as I've said, can, that can be seen as paralleled elsewhere. Those of you wondering um, where the Arch of Ketsesifon is, um, 
in one of the very later slides here. If you look towards the center of this image and look to um, basically the left major river is the river, river Euphrates and the right major river is the river Tigris. As two little uh, um, tributaries um, um, emerge into one, just, bef just south of that, middle of the map, is um, Ketsasaphon itself. And south of that is Babylon, north of that is Baghdad. Thank you very much for listening to my explanation of Ketsasaphon. Hopefully I'll see you all at my classes where there are more images and look forward to your input. Thank you very much. Hopefully you continue to watch my video logs. Comments will be gratefully received. Thank you.